Gecko has been a phenomenal addition to Valorant so far, providing a really refreshing twist to the initiator role with the ability to pick up his utility for use later. While other initiators can wait for their utility to refresh on its own, Gecko's utility can either be better or worse, allowing him to regain multiple abilities by trading both a small amount of time and a little bit of risk. There are, however, ways that you can reduce this risk, which is exactly why having lineups can be so helpful for Gecko. Being able to use Dizzy and know exactly what it's going to cover and where it's going to end up is going to be a necessity and you being able to retrieve it safely in your matches. Today we'll be focusing on all of the best offensive spots for Gecko to use Dizzy to get as much value out of it as possible, while most times still being able to pick it up for another use. If you're really looking to master Gecko, this is going to be a fantastic video for you. So sit back and let's get started. Jumping into Haven first, and just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, we will only be focusing on the current active map pool at this time, because we can't really be sure what sorts of things are going to be changed with the other maps once they come back into play. When the other maps are added back in, maybe we'll do an updated guide on them on the Skillcapped website, so be sure to look for it there. Let's go over towards A Short first and take a look at our first two lineups. This first one is a pretty early one to deal with those pesky short peaks that players like to pull off very frequently. If you're encountering players wide swinging short, then you could simply just throw Dizzy straight at them and if they swing, they will get swiftly punished. This should land somewhere along the back wall, allowing for very easy retrieval. Gecko is a very strong default agent because he can pick up his utility like this, so we highly recommend taking advantage of this when you can. Keep in mind that most flashes that we show won't be exact lineups, but rather they will be good directions to throw the flash where they can be fairly retrievable. When you move over towards A site, it's important to remember your goal for the flash is to aim it towards hell. If you can get it into hell, you're absolutely going to be able to retrieve it. The last thing you want is for your flash to land in the middle of nowhere since heaven players will always be a threat then. You can do both this flash from long as well as this one from short to achieve very similar pickup locations. Moving over towards mid, this one is a little bit iffy, so if you just walk over towards the wall and spawn, make sure you are full sprinting when you jump and throw it. You can tell if you're full running by the footstep audio sound. This should blind anybody peeking B site, allowing for your team to safely scale up. There's another flash over here on this ledge that is a bit easier, but it's less recoverable, so that's why I mentioned the other one first. Once you scale up into B site, you can actually throw a pretty good flash that will tag anybody on B site as well as be easily retrievable back site. Due to the range on Gecko's abilities, a lot of these entry flashes will be best done with some sort of duelist ahead of you, but in the right circumstances, these are some really great things to know about. It's basically just a beacon in the sky alerting you of all of the enemy's positions. Dizzy is super broken when used correctly and can easily win your team rounds. Moving over towards Garage, you'd think that there's some great wingman lineups to clear it, but honestly, unless you're going to risk peaking Garage, it's a little bit iffy. There is this flash that is very retrievable, but does take a bit of practice to actually get it through the crack in the top of the door. What I do is I stand close to the door and aim around the height of the top right bolt on the left door. Again, I highly recommend that you practice this one. Otherwise, you can just chuck it into the doorway and it works all the same. Finally, moving over towards C, if you want to clear all of sight with this flash, you'll just want to aim towards the top of the green box back sight and jump throw while running it. Since you'll normally be using wingman to plant the spike, this can be pretty good to combo since you can pick them both up in the same spot. You can also throw this flash towards default and it will clear all of front sight and platform. It just won't hit the back sight, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. This one might actually be better though, since you don't need to throw it as close to the entrance. Let's fly in over towards Ascent now though, starting out with a great flash for taking mid control from tiles. This flash will give you very brief clearance on catwalk, as well as spot out anybody holding mid from market or top mid. It won't necessarily cover arches, so if you want to use a flash to take arches, try this one. For taking B main, it's a pretty simple flash behind the spot. This box is wall bangable, so it's still best for you to have a teammate to take this with you, but this should work great. Once you push into B main, if you want the most retrievable flash, you'll probably just want to throw it onto B site. This one should land near default and will be very easy to pick up. This flash likely isn't going to be quite as beneficial as throwing it towards the front of B site though, since there are a lot more dangerous angles when exiting B main than there are when pushing onto site. It just won't be as retrievable here, but if you throw it towards market, it's still possible. Lastly, let's move over towards A site. This flash for defaulting A main is pretty great for clearing the first angle. It's incredibly retrievable, so you won't have to worry about losing it, and it's just going to get your team very easy map control. If you throw it fast, you could also spot if anybody is heading towards wine at the start of the round. If you want to throw something that'll help your team scale up a little bit better though, we recommend angling it more towards the entrance of A main. And then for A site, if you get on top
top of this perch, you can throw a great flash that will land on generator and be super easy to pick up. It spots out all of the close angles and the only things that it doesn't really fully clear is generator and hell, so be mindful of that. Moving over towards Fracture, we've got plenty of great flashes to talk about given that there are four choke points on this map. This first flash is a little bit goofy, but hear me out. By run throwing this flash against the first wall in A main, it will bounce back towards you and let you pick it up again safely with no risk. This isn't the greatest flash for taking space, but it could be nice for scouting for an op at the start of the round or just looking to see if anybody is swinging out wide. If you're looking for a deeper flash into main though, you can always throw this one that lands right behind the box. It clears any angles on site that someone might be holding and it's easily retrievable. Once moving over towards site, a great flash that you can throw that will clear a ton of area is by just throwing it into the corner of site where most teams plant the spike. Let's swap sides now and look at what a dish default might look like. There's this super convenient wall for dish that you can throw dizzy high above, allowing for a super difficult flash to shoot. Unfortunately, the angles here aren't super great for dizzy, but this can help your team scale up out of this choke point at the very least to help your team get some space virtually for free. If you land it behind the corner next to dish, it's very easy to pick up as well after your team grabs the space, so it's pretty good. Once once you get up dish, if you want to clear top site a little bit for your team, you could throw this flash that will fly over top just like an AC-130 and help your team clear everything. It also lands behind the panel top site, so it's relatively retrievable. Let's mosey on over to Arcade now. This flash can help your team clear that first angle from heaven a bit more safely. If you want something that helps your team grab just a little bit more space though, you can also throw this one over top that will spot a bit more angles towards site. This one will be slightly more difficult to retrieve because it does land right below heaven, but it's still pretty safe. Once you approach site, you can always throw your flash towards generator and have it be relatively safe to retrieve as well. Keep in mind, due to its ability to be picked up, it also would be a pretty decent tool for clearing tower if you need it. On the other side, we have a pretty good B main default that lands right across the doorway of B main. Oftentimes after they smoke B main, you're not really going to want to just run through it anyway, so it's kind of nice to trade a flash for a smoke in this way, and then you don't have to worry about it. Then you can grab the orb or rotate and wait it out, and then you can hit with your flash when it's refreshed. You have a lot of options, honestly. There is a flash that you can throw over top of B main, but it lands in such an awkward spot and doesn't really cover a ton, so I don't know if it's all that great. I prefer this flash, but it's a bit more risky to throw. It's more retrievable though, and provides a bit more security when running in. So, I mean, there's a little bit of a trade-off. Now let's chill out a little bit and take a look at Icebox. When taking a main on Icebox, oftentimes there is a big threat of getting peaks from pipes. So this first flash can be really great to protect yourself from exiting from the ground floor. You can also do something similar to a Sova Dart by throwing it over belt. We recommend throwing it this way so it lands lower and is easily retrievable. If you throw it on top of belt, you have to swing belt to go get it, which isn't exactly optimal. But this should still prevent players from making aggressive plays on pipes at the start of the round or taking the zip line. Once you get towards a site, I'm going to be honest with you, there's just not a lot of great flashes that you can pick up later. In this case, we'd recommend just lobbing a back site to help your team scale up. You can also throw this flash from pipes and it gets pretty high up so it'll clear screens or generator. It is possibly retrievable, but still kind of risky, so we wouldn't super recommend it if there's a lot going on. In mid, if you're confident enough that they're not playing kitchen, you can always get away with throwing this flash that lands in front of tube. It's pretty risky since if somebody is watching tube, you're pretty much dead, but sometimes sages will wall this and make it a super safe flash to throw a pickup. You can also throw this flash if your team is going mid towards B, but honestly, there's a reason that teams don't go mid on icebox a lot, and it's because all of these angles and choke points kind of just suck. For B long, if you're looking for a flash to make things a bit easier, you can throw this one. I like to aim super high so it covers as much as possible, and then just jump and throw it. If you arch this enough, it will land against the wall across from you behind the box and allow you to retrieve it safely. You can also use Dizzy to help clear the path towards Yellow. Think of him as just this beacon of protection for all of these angles that you peek. If you follow alongside him, theoretically he should clear everything in your path. Once you get towards site, no flashes can be super retrievable, but you can always assist your team with plant by throwing Dizzy into site to blind people enough to disrupt the plant. That's all we got for Icebox though, moving on to Split, our first flash is going to be for A main. If you jump throw it and aim towards ramp, you should be able to clear all those close angles in case you're dealing with any early A pressure. It does land right in front of ramp, but if your team can grab ramp's control, it's easy to retrieve. Moving over towards the A site, you can throw Dizzy through this gap in the billboard to blind anybody on site as well as anybody playing for that heaven peak. This can be great to assist your duelist with taking sight, since oftentimes it's difficult to deal with that player behind blue. Dizzy is also great at clearing out A heaven, since it basically is just a drone that automatically alerts you of anybody 
everybody's position. If you want to push with this, it's a great tool to do so. Moving over towards mid, a great way to use Gecko's Flash is to provide your team cover while they're going to kill Sage's wall. You can throw it across the air and while it's hovering, take out the wall. And by doing this, you've successfully traded a free ability for Sage's 400 credit wall. If you want to move up towards B Heaven, you might be able to bait out some sort of trap setup by bouncing Dizzy off of this back wall. This is similar to what we were talking about on Fracture, but I think that this one might actually be more useful in some ways. This will allow you to pick it back up in the mail room, but may cause the enemy team to show their hand since this is oftentimes the place that most teams will take gunfights when they're pushing B. Otherwise, you can always throw it towards B site to help your team clear hell as well. You may not be able to pick it up, but it will get you on site for sure. Lastly for B, if you want the best chance of preventing a peek, we recommend just throwing Glizzy across the floor towards the entrance. If you throw him at an angle, it's not going to give you much value, but if you throw him at the ground, it will dissuade players from peeking and should be an easy pickup. There's a pretty cool supportive flash that you can throw over the top of B main that will blind players on rafters or players behind pillar, but you'd have to time this pretty well to get value out of it. This could probably be some sort of post plant or late execute flash, if anything, but it's probably not the best. If you're looking for one that you can retrieve and will help your team take sight though, you'll need to run and jump throw this out of B main. It's important you get it as far as possible so that it makes a back sight and clears this difficult angle behind billboard. If you aim it close to the box's back sight, it should be retrievable and help your team out a ton. Enough of that though, let's take a look at everyone's favorite map, Pearl. Starting out with Pearl A main, this default flash can work great to take control of A main and set your team up for a free ultimate orb and early pressure. If you jump, you can see where you're aiming. It's to the right of the wall so that you can pick up Dizzy for free. Once you push A site, it's a bit more of a throwaway flash, but we recommend using this one above the archway. This will blind pretty much everybody everywhere, but it isn't very retrievable. Two uses is still pretty good though, so it's not the end of the world and your teammates will really thank you on the execute. If your teammates are pushing art, you could always flash through this hole. It does get the job done. If you do this every round though, it will likely get shot pretty fast. If you aim it towards the left, it'll be pretty easy to grab as well. You can also use this flash towards B link. It'll hover over link and provide your team cover and info while they scale up. Moving over towards B long, you can always throw this flash that is pretty easy to retrieve, but just be warned that there is a max range on Glizzy's blind, so he won't blind anybody in halls. Once you approach B site, you can throw this flash across towards halls to help your team scale up. From halls, you should be able to grab it pretty easily and set your team up for a good post. -play. Finally, we're taking a look at Lotus. This map has three bomb sites, so just bear with us here. Starting out with A long, this flash is pretty simple. Just throw it over towards the other side. This should help your team scale up past that first choke point and will be easily retrievable. Most teams don't find themselves rushing A anyways, so this is a flash that'll normally throw pretty much every time that we enter A main. Once you get towards site, there aren't really any great flashes, but you can throw this one that gets pretty deep onto site and might help your team out. There's also a pretty decent wingman that you can use if he's not planting to help your team exit that first angle onto site. Moving over towards B site, there aren't a lot of great places that you can throw Dizzy to pick him up, but just throwing it to protect wingman as he's planting is probably one of the best uses. You may be able to throw Dizzy towards spawn if you want the best chance of recovering it, but this assumes that your teammates can scale up and fight spawn with you, which won't always happen. Lastly, moving over towards C site, I like this default flash to take control of C main. This one is going to be really high up, so we'll spot out anybody peeking. Whereas the other one that you might consider throwing tends to be a bit lower and leave room for enemies to maneuver around that sand pile. Pushing C site offers a very nice flash for Gecko as well, allowing him to pick it up from an incredibly safe location back site. All you've got to do is aim high and let Glizzy do the rest. Finally, I'll leave you with a fun flash that maybe somebody will make use of. If you jump throw over the sand pile into C link, you could potentially blind the defenders as they are setting up for a retake. This could be a funny way to fight them. Trust me, nobody is ever going to shoot this. Woo! And that's going to do it for this video. If you guys are looking for some more advanced gecko tips, be sure to check out Skillcapped, where we have our full gecko course teaching you everything that you need to know about playing gecko. He's a super fun agent, and when mastered, can be incredibly helpful for your team, while also being able to make plays for himself, which is super cool to see. In our course, we break down how to play gecko on every single map, your general role for the team, as well as a bunch of little tips and tricks that you just won't hear anywhere else on YouTube. If you click the link in the description below for a limited time, you'll also get a discount code on your subscription, so be sure to sign up today, and we'll get you climbing in no time. As always, we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.